This is TVG, and today we're going up to Tequesta, Florida, to a cemetery called Riverside Memorial Park to visit with one of the all-time greatest catchers who played for 19 seasons, Gary Carter. If you haven't heard of him, you will now. There's a drive, way back, it might be the 300th home run of his career. Gary Carter hit a 2-2 pitch. And he has waited since May the 16th. And he just got it. Sam Perluzzo, the third base coach, shaking his hand. Everybody is happy for Gary Carter, except the Cubs. And Johnson now talking to him, patting him on the back. Come with me. Let's see what we could find. Okay guys, I'm here in Tequesta, Florida. Okay guys, I'm here, I'm in the cemetery, I'm going to start looking for Gary right now. Guys, I'm still looking for Gary Carter. It's a beautiful day here in Tequesta. It's quiet. There's no wind. It's beautiful. Just looking for Gary and his final resting place. Gary Carter was an American professional baseball catcher whose career spanned 19 seasons, which he played primarily for the Montreal Expos and the New York Mets. Gary was nicknamed the kid because of his youthful exuberance and smile. Gary was one out of four players to ever be named captain of the New York Mets. There's only a handful of great catchers that you could think of. Maybe Thurman Munson, Gary Carter is right up there with the greats. He's the only man in the history of Major League Baseball to ever have hit two home runs in an All-Star game and two home runs in a World Series game. He owns that record, all exclusive to himself. And I'll play those clips for you. The stage was set for the 52nd All-Star game with a record crowd in attendance. 
In the fifth, Gary Carter led off against Ken Forge and bought a ticket to ride. Carter's first all-star home run tied the score at one. When Gary's not clearing the fences, he's busy clearing the bases. Then in the seventh, more kid stuff. He did it again. That ball's up, up, and away. And for Gary Carter, congratulations from the commissioner for being named the game's most valuable player. Fastball. High drive into left field. Rice is looking up. She is gone. Home run, Carter. Now that's the art of hitting. He says to himself, the pitcher struck me out on a curve. Is he going to come back with the curve? And Nipper thinks he's probably looking curve. I'll give him a fastball. Well, that could be. And he's hit another one. A towering smash. Rice never even moved. Curveball. And that one went over the screen. That landed on Lansdowne Street. So Gary Carter's second home run tonight and the third home run for the Mets. And it is six to nothing New York. Oh, was that a hit? Was it? Rice, it was like somebody had poured concrete and made him a statue. He never even moved. It's a breaking ball. And you Excuse me, do you know what Gary, the, Gary Carter, the famous baseball player, the catcher, he's buried? Thanks, man. You get a lot of crowds here for him, Gary Carter? Um, no, not really. He's a famous baseball player. Yeah. 19 seasons he played. So I mean, he's in, you know, he's an all-time. He made, he's in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. That's what's bringing you here today. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to see it. I'm in the area. I yeah. live down. I'm close by. I just wanted to check it out. Okay. Cool. Thank you so much. No problem. You too. All right, guys, I found it. Gary Carter.
Gary was part of the 1986 Miracle Mets when Bill Buckner made an error and the ball went between his legs and the New York Mets went on to win the 1986 World Series. Little roller up along first, behind the bag, it gets through Buckner, here comes Knight and the Mets win it! Darryl Strawberry was a part of that team. I want you to hear what he says about Gary Carter in this interview after he passed away. Family, friends, and former teammates have started to arrive here at Christ Fellowship to honor and celebrate the amazing life of Gary Carter, as you just mentioned. I mean, anyone who mentions his name over the past week, they all talk about his character, his integrity, his love of family, his love of faith, and of course, his love of the game of baseball. And someone who knows him very well, who spent a very special few years with him on that 1986 New York Mets team is Daryl Strawberry. And thank you for being with us here this evening. And tell me a little bit about some of your best memories of Gary Carter. Well, the best memories are, you know, winning with him, um, just being a part of uh, a team that uh, has such a strong personality. And then there's kid in the middle of the clubhouse <laughs> who's a man of uh, tremendous faith and, and love God and loves his family and his children and, and what he represented and what he meant to the game of baseball. Um, he's dearly missed. You know, we all are grieving. Um, it's a tremendous loss to all of us. Uh, we love him so dear. Um, he's touched all of us in so many ways. And we just have admiration and respect for the man uh, that put on the uniform, but that lived the life the right way. That's right. And, and what has been the, the outpouring of support that you've been hearing from, from former teammates? Have you all been in contact a lot in this past week talking about Gary? Yeah, we, we, we all realized that uh, he was sick and, and we realized that it could be close to that time for him, but um, we were hoping that he would make it through because when you look at a man like Gary Carter that's lived his life the right way and, and you wonder and you have questions of why, you know, why would he be stricken with uh, this type of disease uh, and, and then you think about you know, all the great things that uh, he did as a person, not just a baseball player, but, uh, you know, the, the charity work of, of helping children and, and, and the fans, of loving fans and signing all the autographs he's did. And, and just a smile, you know, a lot of people talk about his smile was, you know, for the camera and this is that Gary Carter was free. You know, a lot of us were miserable, but he was free, oh. you know, and what a blessing it is yeah. to know uh, a, a man has lived his life the right way and his legacy and, and, and his family, you know, uh, his family is uh, grieving right now, but uh, uh, they should be, be happy be, because, you know, you have a father like that and, and a husband like that. And, and that's what everybody really dies for, to have a, a man that comes into their life as a, as a father and a husband and, and live life the right way. Right, and, and what a legacy he leaves for his family and his friends and for his former teammates. And, and you just played in his golf tournament not too long ago, and you knew he was sick. Uh, how was your time with him in those last moments? It was real short, you know, because I know he was having tremendous headaches at the time, and, and he needed to go back and rest. And, and he said, Straw, let me tell you, I've been blessed. And if it's God's will, uh, I'm ready to go. So, you know, bless his heart, and you just, just want to, you know, be thankful that you had the opportunity to, meet Gary Carter and play with Gary Carter, but more, more than anything, just, just to know the man, the man, the man of character, the man of faith, and the man of truth. In 2003, Gary was inducted to the National Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York. You know that feeling as a kid, when you go into a candy store for the first time, all you can do is smile and just stand in awe. Well, this kid is in the candy store today, Cooperstown, where all dreams come true. Can you feel it? It is so sweet. His plaque read Montreal Expos, which was the first time a Montreal Expo has ever been inducted to the National Baseball Hall of Fame. After professional baseball, Gary coached for college baseball right here at Florida Atlantic University. Coincidentally, his daughter also coached the softball team. 
She also was a catcher from 1999 to 2002 for Florida State University, like father, like daughter. Gary was an active philanthropist. The Gary Carter Foundation, which he was the president of, supports eight title public schools right here in Palm Beach County for underprivileged children. In May 2011, Gary went to the doctor because he was having headaches and forgetfulness. Gary was diagnosed with four brain cancer tumors. He ultimately died less than a year later. In January 2012, Kimmy was devastated. She posted on her blog that her father's cancer had returned and it was more aggressive. Gary was born in April 1954 in Culver City, California. Gary died February 16th, 2012 at the young age of 57. Gary was a very religious person and he lived his life very virtuous and that was known throughout Major League Baseball. You will be very missed Gary. You were way too young. Gary was such a strong human being. For him to be cut down in his life at 57 years old is just unbelievable to me. And it just, it just is just terrible. And I feel bad for his family. My heart goes out to all of you. Rest in peace, Gary. And that's it for today. And if you like what you saw, please give it an old thumbs up. Please share it with a friend if possible. And subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. And one last thing. I want to give a shout out to my son. TVG, out.